Welcome to another edition of CC Weekly. As you can see, I'm outside. But yo, DH, give me something I can smoke to. Welcome to another episode of CC Weekly. It's your boy Crook. As always, this is brought to you by WalterHill.com. Premium eyewear. Find your perfect pair. WalterHill.com. A lot has gone on since I last talked, but I'm going to rewind a little bit because people saw the pictures I posted with Dre and they've been asking me to talk about it. It was a beautiful thing. I got there late. Yep, leave it up to me to get there late. I caught the tail end of the ceremony. It was a large crowd outside, you know, on Hollywood Boulevard. A lot of recognizable faces. It was dope to see all the supporters who came out, the fans, the people who built the culture on the West Coast, you know, just to see all of that, that was dope. After the ceremony, they had an after event at the Roosevelt Hotel, you know what I mean? Top floor penthouse suite with roof access. And that's where all those photos you see me take, all those videos, those lives, that's what we were. You know, Dre and Snoop, they got that brand, Gin and Juice. I guess it's a cocktail, some kind of some kind of alcoholic brand that they pushing right now. So they had a gifting suite set up where you can get free t-shirts, free everything, free hats, free sweatshirts, free hoodies, you know what I mean? And then you walk outside and that's where you saw Battle Cat, you saw DJ Quick, you saw Exhibit, you know what I'm saying? This was really classic. To see Battle Cat and DJ Quick in one frame, getting busy, having fun, that's classic. I want you to understand what you're looking at when you see Battle Cat on the turntables and DJ Quick on the mic. Those two guys mean so much to the West Coast and to the culture, period. If there's a top five greatest West Coast producers list, you just saw two of the people in the top five rocking out together in one frame it was historic as the sun comes in and out it's all good you know what i'm saying cc weekly brought to you by walterhill.com premium eyewear finds your perfect pair use the discount code cc20 get a discount you feel me but yo yeah so like i was saying if you name five producers from the west coast and you trying to name the top five producers ever? Two of them was in that frame. DJ Quick and Battle Cat, period. One was being honored that day. His name is Dr. Dre. So you could imagine it's already three of those five in there. It was one of those kind of occasions. Jimmy was there, Paul was there, Snoop was there. You feel me? Like everybody was just having a good time. 50 was there, 1500 or nothing was there. You know, DJ Silk was there. Aftermath was there. Top Dog was there. You know what I mean? Big Boy from Big Boy's Neighborhood was there. It was just, it was a real function. Problem was there. Speaking of function, we out there trying to function. You know what I'm saying? Problem was there. And of course, like I said, DJ Quick, Battle Cat, you know, I just popped in like, yo, let me go and congratulate the homie, do my rounds, talk to people, chop it up with everybody, make sure everybody been good, give my peace and blessings to everybody. And then, you know, it's time for me to go. You feel me? Because I got more work to do. That building was full of very, very successful people. Now, I do consider myself successful. Fuck yeah. Where I come from? You know, I made it from the real gutter, out the real bottom. You feel me? None of that fucking make-believe shit. None of that. So, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm successful. Fuck yeah. You feel me? But I still got a lot of work to do. And I can't accomplish that by just chilling all day. I got to keep moving. So, you know, I moved around the room and I got up out of there. Harry O was there. That's the other thing. It was a full circle moment when you think about it because Harry O was there. For those who don't know, Harry O is the guy who helped Suge finance Death Row from its inception, put up the money, and Death Row ended up being very vital 
to keeping Interscope Records alive. So the guy who gave Suge the money to start the label that helped Interscope stay alive was in the building as a full circle moment after, you know, being released from jail all them years. So to see Harry O and Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg all in the same fucking location, that was a full circle moment for the empire of Interscope. You feel me? That was a full circle moment. But like I said, it was time for me to go and get my foot on the gas. I have work to do. I got business meetings to be at. I got sessions to be at. I got shit to build. So I could sit up here on this rooftop and not give a fuck about shit. <laughs> but I got to put my work in. So, you know, that's good. I'm ready. I love it. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing to me. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? I keep my foot on the gas. So anyway, Top Dog was there. And I chopped it up with Top for a minute about quality West Coast music and TDE's impact. But yo, let's think about that. Top Dog was there. That brings me to my next thing I want to talk about real quick. Kendrick Lamar. Y'all gotta forgive me, man. I'm outside. We on location, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when the clouds go by, it changes the tone, the colors, the wind is blowing, who knows? We rocking and rolling though. And it's brought to you by WalterHill.com. But check this out, Kendrick Lamar. That verse. That verse, like Kendrick is really good at shaking up shit. This like Control Part 2, except this song is a club banger. So chart-wise, it's going even further than Control did. I've seen people online say, Crook, what do you think about this song? I got to tell you something. I'm a little biased. I'm a little biased about this song with Metro Boomin, Future, K-Dot. You know what I'm saying? This song, what is it called? Like That? Yeah. I'm a little biased because that sample that they using is from Rodney Owen, Joe Cooley, Everlasting Bass, and that's a West Coast classic. That is a West Coast classic since I was a kid. Lowriders, Impalas, El Caminos, Regals, Cadillacs, Coupes, was flying down the street or cruising real slow with the windows down bumping that everlasting bass by Rodney Owen, Joe Cooley. So for him to get on a West Coast classic and serve, it mean a little bit more to me. It's probably a little bit different for me. When I hear it, it's playing with my bias. You understand me? But I can admit when I'm a little biased towards something. A lot of these talking heads in hip hop, they don't admit it. You know what I mean? But I could admit it. Really speaking our language on that Rodney Owen Joe Cooley. Are you crazy? So when I heard it, I'm like, oh shit, that's where they went? They took it there? And then when he came in spitting what he was spitting, I paid attention to that line about Prince and Mike Jack. And I said, oh, okay. That's probably why he's doing those sound effects. In between the bars, he had these little sounds he was making that remind me of a Prince song. So I felt like he was in his Prince bag, the whole verse really, if you pay attention. And I do think that that's a great comparison. Drake, Mike, Kendrick, Prince, that's a great comparison. So, you know, he did his thing. I feel like it was jabs, it was jabs. It, it, he didn't try to go just knock him out, you feel me? But K-Dot is a master at crafting songs and verses. So I'm not surprised that he shook the game up like that. J. Cole is nasty. J. Cole is vicious. When Cole want to get that pen moving, it's going to move. It's going to move. This will be a very interesting matchup. Because I was there when they did Takeover and Ether. 
I was in New York when they would play Takeover, then play Ether in the club. I saw Jay Z and I saw Nas and talked to him personally when they did Takeover and Ether. That era, I was right there in New York when that was cracking. I was in a mix, okay? So I see what the energy was and then what it became. For some reason, a lot of people counted Nas out and the rest was history. So listen, whoever you counting out, this could go either way. But J. Cole has his work cut out for him. Why? Because he's not only going up against somebody who is lyrically talented and creative when it comes to the craftsmanship of a song, but he's also going against somebody who comes from gang culture. That simple ingredient right there is different. It's a little more vicious. It's a little more aggressive. It's a little more growl. There's a little more believability into your threats that you promise you're gonna keep. So I hope Cole is ready because it's gonna be the ink pen against ink pen. Skill set against skill set. Fan base against fan base. Demeanor against demeanor. And I know when you sprinkle a little bit of that Compton gang culture in there in your disc records, things get a little different. I'm interested to see how this is going to play out. This episode of CC Weekly is brought to you by WalterHill.com. Find your perfect pair. The code you want to use is CC20 for that discount. P. Diddy, man, I'm telling you. Y'all probably already heard this, but one time I um, was invited to do Making the Band. While I was on Death Row Records, they reached out and invited me to be on Making the Band. So I flew all the way to New York, jumped in like two or three scenes. One scene, we was playing chess with some elders, me and Dylon. Another scene was like a dinner table scene. Everything was filmed, finished, cut, edit, all that. Puffy saw it and said, hell no. <laughs> See, y'all gotta understand. There was people who fucked with me when I was young, crooked eye. You feel me? But it was a lot of politics in the game. It was politics. So Puff was like, we not giving him that look because ultimately that's going to help out Suge Knight. Like, why would we put Suge's number one new artist on our platform that we built and we beefing with him. You feel me? I understood it. It was all good. But yeah, Puff was like, get that out of here. And then I seen him at the Shark Club. You know what I mean? Like about a year later. And me and him had a long conversation. Jay-Z was there, Beyonce was there. That's for a whole nother episode. But we had a real conversation. But like I said, that's for another episode. I don't know where I'm at with P. Diddy yet. People ask me my opinion about that. I really don't know where I'm at yet. Maybe I got to see some more of it unfold. You know what I'm saying? I'm a real patient person like that. I do want to ask y'all a question regarding P. Diddy, though. Do y'all think the feds moved in to find evidence against him or to destroy evidence that he had against other people? You know, everybody got their get out of jail free card. You feel me? Like, yo, y'all ever try to take me down? I'm pulling this out right here. You think they went in to go grab that? So the even more powerful than P. Diddy would be spared during this whole process? You just ask him. I don't know. I'm going to let it unfold some more. CC Weekly. Brought to you by WalterHill.com. Premium eyewear finds your perfect pair. Alright? Thanks for fucking with me. I'll see y'all next time.